Hey y'all, it's your girl Marissa Chris Day, and I'm back with Talk To Me Tuesday, TTMT, and today we're going to talk about PPD. Okay, that was a little bit corny, but we're going to keep it out. We're going we gonna to ride that out. But anyways, y'all, we're going to talk about PPD today, y'all, and that is postpartum depression. Before I even get into it, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, comment, like. Hold on, y'all. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Boom, that's what it is. Don't forget to do that. Your girl finally said in the beginning, so uh, shout out to me because your girl always be forgetting that. So, all right, y'all, let's get into it. Since we're talking about postpartum depression today, why not start off with a little story time? So, basically, your girl was uh, grown in school and, um, yeah. Excuse me, y'all. By the way, if I'm talking through my nose because Cleveland weather is so weird. One day is 69 and next day is snowing and raining. I just think this weather is just weird, period. And earth is ghetto. Please excuse me, Lord. But it's just ghetto. We just ghetto right now. I don't know. The weather is, the weather is ghetto. We is ghetto. I don't know what's going on. Okay. But it's weird. It's just weird. But we gonna let that ride out. We just gonna let it ride out. All right. So, y'all. I'm going to go back to my story time because your girl be found out, but I'm going to go to my story time. And so basically, y'all was being grown. I end up having my son. And so after that, I had experienced postpartum depression. And I today I just wanted to lay it out and just to show you the things that you could do to prevent it and the things that and the symptoms that I had. So let's just start off with just saying that the symptoms that I did have was symptoms that was noticeable to people that were around me because these are symptoms that does not identify identify with who you are. For example, you I used to always dress up. And so for me, my mom was like, why are you not dressing up no more? Like what's going on? And she knew that I was going through depression. And the moment she said that is the moment I clicked and was like, dang, something is wrong with me. Because let me tell you, when you're going through it, you don't know that you're going through it. So it's so important to have people around you who've been with you or who knows or who know you to say, okay, hey, Sis, this is different about you. Sis, what you doing? In this situation, I was depressed. In this situation, though, but for my situation, I was depressed. And for me, I have an uh, interest in dancing. You not watching dance videos no more. You not doing this. You not doing that. You not choreographing. You all right? What's wrong? You know what I mean? So it's so important to have people around you. And just even for you to say, you know, for you to look at yourself and be like, well, I'm not doing this no more. And sometimes it's going to pop up like, Dang, I used to do this. And then you know something wrong too as well when your feelings and your emotions is off. Feelings and my emotions have always fluctuated. But when I was going through postpartum depression after I had my first son, I was going through it. My feelings was all over the place. I was sad for like 24 hours. How can you be sad? I was not even up 24 hours, but I was sad. It was so difficult. It was very difficult. And so just, with just that... It was so difficult. It was so difficult. I'm just like, bruh, what is going on? Why am I so sad all the time? And so I would tell you to prevent from being sad all the time is to exercise, is to move your body, is to go around, is to, you know, do certain things that's going to get you moving and pumping, that's going to activate that that hormone, that um, dop dopamine, dopamine. I believe that's what it is. Don't quote me. But it's to activate that hormone so you can get the movement so your blood is going. So you can get endorphins so you can feel good. You know what I mean? If you're just sitting down, just laying down, then you're going to still be depressed. You're going to still have the emotions and the feelings of being depressed. And I think it's so important to not go based off of what you feel. Because if you think about depressed, the reason why you are depressed is because you are into your feelings too much. And I'm not saying like, don't be in your feelings, but don't idolize your feelings. Don't worship how you feel. Some days I don't feel like going to going to the gym or getting up, but I still have to do it because even if I don't feel like it, that doesn't mean that it's not true or that doesn't mean that it is true. So you just got to be careful with identifying that because for me, I was all up in my feelings. You couldn't tell me, I don't want to be a mom, I'm crying. I'm like, give me a break. Like, I'm making excuses. I'm being lazy because I'm just like, I'm so depressed. And once I realized I was depressed, y'all, that was like the best excuse I could ever make ever. Like, I'm depressed. Leave me alone. I don't want to do this. I'm depressed. Leave me alone. Like, I'm just depressed. Like, y'all, even me going to school, 
I was not going to school every day. And I'm not saying like I was making it an excuse intentionally, but unintentionally it was an excuse because I didn't want to get better. That's what I mean. I wasn't making an excuse because it's like, oh, no, I'm just going to make this an excuse and I want everybody to feel sorry for me. No, I was making an excuse because I didn't want better for myself. And so I would begin to make that as an excuse. Like, I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to stay lazy. I'm going to do S, Y, and Z. I'm going to keep drinking, y'all. And that's another thing. I, I was drinking a lot. I was drinking absolute. I was drinking so much much to the point where my mom like I'm gonna send you to AA and I wasn't drinking that much but you know she ain't want me to get there I don't think I was drinking that much but I'm saying if every time I would go out I would go out with my friends on the weekend that's the only time I want to drink I want to drink during the week I would drink wine though and maybe get drunk with wine so maybe that is bad but anytime that I did drink and just to add to that I would drink to get drunk and so that was an issue because I didn't want to deal with anything else that was going on and so I think a lot of times my depression came from anxiety of people judging me mind you y'all back oh y'all I ain't never tell my story basically y'all uh, I think the reason why I was really depressed is because I was in college I was growing like physically I'm not gonna say spiritually and emotionally but physically I was growing physically I was going to the gym I'm like oh I'm this girl that how this I'm getting my mind right and then boom I'm pregnant and I really literally have a bump in the road and so I realized I was pregnant and it's like my whole life just did a whole completely 180 like I was in Philly and I had to move back to Cleveland I had my own apartment I had to move back with my mom I had friends who I was losing friends because they ain't like me being pregnant and so everything in my life literally had and I'm talking about these was like some of these was my core friends and um I lost like I lost a lot of people in, in that moment and I and I lost you know connections and I lost opportunities if I'm being real because I stayed because I made a decision you know what I mean it's always consequences for your actions and you got to realize that and I'm not saying you know some of you guys may be married some of you not but for me I'm not married so and that was a consequence for me. And I'm like, dang, you probably shouldn't have never did that at that time. But, you know, it is what it is. My son is still a blessing. But the the thing that I felt that would have prevented me from going into depression was embracing me being pregnant, embracing me being a new mom. I think I was such a negative Nancy that I always wanted to look at the negative. And with my second son, I didn't do that as much because I'm like, I'm not going through back what I just went through. But the first time around, I'm like, bruh. What is going on? I cannot take this. My emotions was just all over the place. I couldn't tell you I was going to be mad or sad that day. In that moment, maybe two hours later, I was happy because I'm eating food. And so then I start emotionally eating. And so when I'm emotionally eating, I was literally, y'all, I would literally go to this um, store, which is like 45 minutes, and they have cookie cakes, and I would just drive to go get a cookie cake. My, I had 45 minutes to change my mind and I'm like, nope, I'm going to get a cookie cake. So if you tell, so when I tell you I'm still trying to lose this weight, I'm still trying to lose this weight because your girl was depressed and I was emotionally eating. So I gained a lot of weight. It, although I was breastfeeding, my breastfeeding did not accumulate. My breastfeeding did not make a difference because the calories that I was intaking was more than the calories that I was burning. And it was about quadruple, okay, like 10 times more. If I'm burning 3,000, I probably was eating 6,000 because I wanted so much. And that's probably an exaggeration, but I was eating so much emotionally. I was eating anytime. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to be a mom. I was upset. I was mad at myself. I was mad at, you know, my child father because he's still in Philly at the time. And I'm just like, I'm just so over it. I'm not dancing. I'm not in college, y'all. I'm not getting maternity pay. I just had every reason to throw myself a pity party. And guess what I did? And you can't do that when you're depressed. You have to get up. You have to stand your ground. You have to move. You have to you have to do the exact thing that you do not want to do or you're going to stay where you are. And so I stayed where I was at for, for a good minute. And the thing that I would do to prevent it even more is to pray. I feel like I should have got on my knees 10 times more. I feel like I actually probably never prayed in that moment, but I should. Y'all, I'm so sorry that my camera just literally just said we're out of storage. So it stopped recording and I forgot what I was saying because your girl was on the road. OK, I was going in. Your girl was going in. But um, I'm just going to do basically prevention things that you could do. And that's really just um, being accountable. Number one, um, understanding where you are and embracing where you are. Number two. Um, three is just being around people who's going to support you even if you don't have people around you who's going to support you you could get you a community group you go to the Salve Art 
you could go to the Salvation Army, you could go downtown to the county, you could do a lot of things that um, that I think that if we just look in that, if we Google, you will be able to find a community support groups. There's always people out there who's willing to support. You can even go to church. You could find you a church home or something. Not even a church home, but go to a church one day. You know, they always support and single moms as well. And so I think it's just so important to, you know, have a support group around you because if I didn't have a su support group and if I didn't have someone to notice I was going through depression, I probably would have still been in it. I will also take myself to the spa or like dress up or just do something one day. Even if it's in your house and you cannot afford, you can do your own nails. You go to the hair store and get two, three dollars, five dollars and, and, you know, do your nails, scrub your feet extra hard one day, do a little face mask. You go to Walgreens, they got them for like five, ten dollars. You could always do something. You could save money and you could really do it in your house. But your girl likes spending money, but not no more because we save it. But you could always save, you could always do something that, that you're going to feel good about yourself. I don't know, whatever is your hobby it is, whatever it is you like to do, take a hike. Listen, y'all, you got to get it. Like, go get some vouchers or something, you know what I mean? Or even if it's one hour a day to yourself while the baby is asleep. I know people say sleep with the baby, but then you sleep and you up and tired again. You feel like you're not doing anything because if you don't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of that child. And I don't mean just take care of yourself 24 seven where it's like, um, it's to the extreme and you're not taking care of your child, but take care of yourself so you can take care of your child. Before I let y'all go, um, when I say they feed off of you, I was stressed out the whole time with my second son. Mind you, he was having seizures seizures y'all like the day after I had him like three days after I had him he was in the NICU and um y'all I'm not gonna cry but um that's just crazy though but I will say I was stressed out the whole time and the doctor couldn't find out anything that was wrong with him and so I would tell you that how you feel affects your baby they feel everything you feel we sharing we are sharing a body. He feels everything you feel. And so even with that being said, just your daughter or son being around you, they're going to feel what you feel. And so um, I think it's so important to take care of yourself. I know it's important to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Embrace where you are. Embrace that new beautiful body. Um, you have a mom body now, you know. So love it. Love where you are. Love everything about it. And yeah, y'all, I would do a, I mean, that's, these are the things I would do to prevent. I know it's probably, it's a lot more. Um, I will also control eating habits. Like if you feel like you want to eat a lot, control that. I wouldn't drink so much. I would be around friends and support group. Tell your partner how you're feeling and everything that you are going through. Tell him like, I'm, you know, I need help with this. I need help with S, Y, and Z. So yeah, y'all, you know. That's that's what we do over here. But these are my prevention tips. I'm so sorry, y'all, if it like kind of went off just because I'm low key irritated that it stopped because I was going in. But thank you all for tuning in with TTMT. Talk to me Tuesday. You know, it's your girl Marissa Christine. OK. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.